We have a story today about the poet and memoirist Mary Carr, whose book The Liars Club was a bestseller. Now Carr has a new book called Lit, about how she got out of alcoholism, drugs, physical abuse, and mental illness, and into the Catholic Church. Judy Valente reports. Every poem probably has 60 drafts behind it. Mary Carr talks about her love of poetry with students at a writer's conference in Michigan. Hello, honey bun. Carr was known mainly as a poet until her coming-of-age memoir, The Liars Club, became a bestseller in the 1990s. It was the vivid story of a sometimes hilarious but often brutal Texas childhood. Here's a snapshot of your past, the past that you write about. Troubled family life, unstable childhood, alcoholism, divorce, depression, near suicide. Who is Mary Carr today? Well, it's really been uphill since all that. <laughs> Carr reveals the rest of her story in a new memoir, a story summed up by its title, Lit, as in Lit from Within, by the literature she grew up with, by alcohol and drugs, and finally, lit by a faith she found unexpectedly in the Catholic Church. No one in the Catholic Church hired me as a spokesperson, <laughs> nor would they. I'm sure I'm not the Pope's favorite Catholic, nor is he mine. Carr grew up amid the hard scrabble oil fields of East Texas. Her father drank himself to death. Her mother was married seven times. Well, I'm somebody who really does feel like I was snatched out of the fire and found something in myself that's luminous and gives me ballast. The road to faith was a long, hard climb for someone who once described herself as an undiluted agnostic. By her mid-30s, Carr's life had begun to unravel. Her marriage was failing. She drank heavily, wrecked the family car, was hospitalized for an emotional breakdown. In desperation, she took a friend's advice and reluctantly began to pray. I would kind of bounce on my knees and I would say, uh, higher power, please keep me sober today, whatever they told me to say. And then at night I would say, thank you for keeping me sober today. And then I started to express myself, which was often, um, you know, with obscene gestures, double barrel at the light fixtures. Carr was newly separated and trying to stay sober when her five-year-old son asked her to take him to church. And I said, uh, why? And he said the only sentence he could have said that would have gotten me to church, he said, to see if God's there. And I thought, oh, okay. Carr took her son to various churches, a process she dubbed the god Arama. She would sit with a paperback and a cup of coffee while he searched for God. We got out, we got in the car, and he's buckling his seatbelt, and he, I said, so was God there? And he's like, well, yeah. Like, where were you? So that was when I decided that for him, we would find a place of worship. Carr says she still equated most organized religions with something people just did socially. Then one day she passed a Catholic church in Syracuse, New York, where she was teaching. She was struck by a banner out front. It said, sinners welcome. I thought I had a better shot at becoming a pole dancer at 40, right, than uh, making it in the Catholic church. And I think what struck me really wasn't the grandeur of the mass. It was the simple faith of the people. For me, this whole journey was a journey into awe. I would just get these moments of quiet where there wasn't anything, and it was, um, my head would shut up. And I knew that that was a good thing. And also the carnality of the church. There was a body on the cross. Father Bruno Shaw, a Dominican friar, is a close friend who has written about Carr's work. In the Catholic Church, above the altar, one sees a cross with the body on it. The body is there. The corpus of Christ is there, bleeding still, in the midst of the world. And that's, I think, really what got to her. Her experience of being a sinner, her experience of being a sinner and recognizing that this does not distinguish her from anybody else in the world. Many of her recent poems reimagine the life of Christ. She sees in poetry a form of prayer. Poetry is, for me, Eucharistic. 
you take someone else's suffering into your body, their passion comes into your body, and in doing that, you commune, you take communion, you make a community with others. Cara has been sober for 20 years, but she still prays to keep her demons at bay. I don't have much virtue now. It's really, all of it is very, is grace for me. All of it is given. I'm a very venal, I want to eat all the chocolate and snort all the cocaine and uh, kiss all the boys. The fact that this person would uh, turn around so drastically is compelling. She sees all the alcoholics who don't make it. She sees all the good chances that have been given to her for no good reason. And she asks in wonder and thanksgiving to God, why me? And that's a great testimony to her faith and to the authenticity of her conversion. I've been reading a lot. A conversion, she says, transformed every aspect of her life. My goal in writing about my faith wasn't to proselytize, even though I did feel called in prayer to write about it, but to try to make a bridge between people who had been like myself, completely unbaptized, completely without faith, a bridge between that and to bring them into the experience of faith. Carr says she hopes her turbulent past provides more than just a good story, but also sends out a message of hope to others. With her characteristic wry humor, she still refers to herself as a black belt sinner, but a lucky one nonetheless. I've never contended that I had a really horrible life. I feel like Jesus does like me better than he does all of you. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Judy Valente in Grand Rapids, Michigan.